options, we have hierarchies of specialization. So we have a, a person, and a person can be a patient, or they can be a health professional, and a health professional can be a doctor, or a nurse, or a chiropractor, or a physiotherapist, and a doctor, oh, sorry, a health professional can be any of those, and a doctor can be an orthopedic surgeon, or a radiologist, or it could be a pulmonologist, or it could be an internist, any number of different things, right? Now, because these are very useful hierarchies, because we can make statements, and we can put in place processes that are that are general and they capture a whole bunch of the sub areas of the hierarchy. So we can put in rules, licensing rules for a given state involving doctors. That doctors have to go through certain types of uh, licensing practices before they're, they're qualified. Um, or for health professionals, we may have certain rules about how they have to be identified or how they have to be listed or how they have to be uh, qualified or what have you. The point is in the real world, being able to group things like this is useful. Nurses, we talk about nurses, and then there's LPNs and, R and RNs. So the point is, by it's, it's sometimes useful for description to be able to refer to a whole group of people at once, recognizing that there are, that there are, um, that there are specializations within that. So it is with our programs. We can handle, and so it is with our models. We, we might write one method to handle person, but there's many particular types of persons in our model. There are doctors, there are patients, there's nurses, but we can just write one thing that handles persons, maybe prints out their basic information about their birth date and their name and their, their, their age, and that will work for all of these, okay? Um, so here, within any logic, um, you will sometimes see um, see evidence of this okay so watch this um, let's 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 take a look at this um, if I say offspring uh, dot uh, dot set X you notice it's referring to the agent location it doesn't say the person location it says the agent but because person is an agent that's actually fine so in any logic Person is an agent. If we had a bird class, it would be an agent. Deer is an agent. And actually, this is any logic six. So really, now Maine is also an agent in this in this version of any logic. Okay. Um, so oh, um, so uh, Maine should really should really also be under agent now in any logic seven. Okay. Um, so now we have sort of this notion of of agents. Now, watch this. If, if this will sometimes be confusing about the documentation, so I want to explain it. This should really go in there. Oh, that's un aesthetically displeasing, but it will have to we'll have to live with it for now. Um, okay. Um, uh, and in general, um, there's lots of things in any logic that are grouped these ways. We have transitions in general. Then we have rate transitions, condition transitions, transition timeout, transition messages, and anything that handles a transition can handle one of these. Because it's just a specialized type. It's just like anyone who says, my, my building is reserved for doctors, they'll handle a doctor of any sort. Or if there's a, uh, a general rule in place for how doctors need to be licensed, it applies to, to doctors in general. So it is with experiments, okay? Um, and Java is like this in a big way. Um, as well. Java is, is built on the set of, set of hierarchies. So a list is a collection, a queue is a collection, a set is a collection. Collection is something you can iterate over, etc. Um, why is this relevant? Because it's sometimes confusing. Watch this. Let's go to get connected, um, establish offspring connections based on this. So look at this offspring connect to. If I go look at that, what does this take? It takes an agent. See that? See this? It says connect to takes in an agent. That's fine because a person is an agent. Okay? Um, every person is an agent and therefore they can be connected to them just fine. If I go look at mother.getConnections, this, re re this returns a, um, a list of things that are agents. Or, or subtypes of them. 
Now, this in AnyLogic 7, it's a lot easier to deal with than AnyLogic 6. In AnyLogic 6, you'd have to worry about this quite a bit because connect because get connections would return a thing of agents, and you'd have to turn them into persons. So this is why you see this. We can iterate through agents, and then we have to turn it into persons. In AnyLogic 7, we can instead uh, we can instead just loop over persons. Okay. Um, so um, I don't think I'll go into this in great detail, but I want to show you one more sophisticated way of using this. And I can't remember if this is a model I gave you. I don't think so, but uh, it's a model I'll show you. Okay, so watch this. Um, and we're just about done here. These are the last few remarks I'll be making in, as part of the Java tutorials. Hey, hey. Um, okay, USAF classes. Uh, and it's in example models, and it's in, um, it's in actually for sharing within class only, and it's in HPV model. HPV, okay, it's this guy here, version seven. Ah, watch this. This is this is where it gets really interesting and powerful. So at a basic level, you need to know about it because the documentation will sometimes confuse you otherwise. So that's one way. But ladies and gentlemen, you could take advantage of this in a big way. Here is a model where we have a person defined, and every person in this model is going to have certain characteristics okay, that they share in common. Um, by characteristics, I mean types of characteristics. They can be a smoker or not. They can be at different levels of sexual activity. They can have, they'll be uh, 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 arranged in a certain state chart, um, uh, divided up in the early on. So this is an example of common characteristics of people, right? Now watch this. This is where it gets really interesting. Uh, I don't expect thrown cushions for this one, though. Um, so watch this. Males have all the characteristics of persons, but also have a certain state chart associated with HPV, OK? And look what's behind them. Do you see this here? Do you see what's behind that? These are the characteristics of a person. They have all these characteristics, but then they also have this male-specific progression. But women, women are more complex yet. So let's take a look at, at the women's HPV situation, because women are much more at risk of cervical cancer. So they have a much larger set of possible states that they can get into. Um, and, and, and there's risk of cervical cancer, et cetera. So for women, in addition to the basic characteristics of a person, you have this broad set of states, um, and they have issues of screening and whether or not they're pregnant, which don't come into play with males. So here, ladies and gentlemen, we have person defining the general characteristics of personhood, and then we have male specifying sort of maleness, which extends personhood, but includes these other characteristics like this progression with respect to HPV um, and, and information on, on uh, whether or not they're susceptible, immune or whatever. And then there's female, which defines femalehood with respect to this particular model, which has all the characteristics uh, shared uh, for general characteristics of males, of, of, of persons, but has all these other characteristics as well that are unique to females. Um, pregnancy status, uh, cervical cancer screening status and HPV screening, and then um, characteristics of, of state of progression associated with cervical cancer. So this is a model where we have grouped together persons into a group. We've defined their characteristics and then the unique characteristics of subgroups and anything in our model that handles a person can handle a female or can handle a male. It's just that a male will have all these other things going on. A female will have all these other things going on. So this is a model which uses this hierarchy, and any logic supports that in the, in the following way. And these are going to be my final, final remarks here. Um, so here, female within the model, you'll notice that that uh, down here in the in the advanced uh, is it in the advanced area? Um, 
Uh, okay, where is uh, I'm I'm confused. Um, okay, uh, so this is property female, and I would have thought it would say imports implements no additional class code. Uh, oh, maybe it's in advanced here. Um, no, oh come on, it says extends. It, it's it's got to be saying. Oh, extends another agent. Thank you. Person. It extends person. So here, what this means is it's a subtype of person, but actually it means more than it's a sub. It's a subclass, meaning it is. It gets all the sort of implementation of person, all the things that are in place for person. It gets plus it can define this extra layer on top of that. And that's a similar thing with uh, with male. So both female and male can sort of. You just have to define in one place the characteristics of person. You don't have to go duplicate and you know, copy paste, copy paste, and every time you change it one, you have to change in the other. You just define uh, characteristic for person, and then you build the top of that. Okay. Okay. Um, that's good. There's also this notion of interface, which uh, provides sort of a more abstract way of saying I support these interface, I support these functionality. And then you can implement an interface. You can implement multiple interfaces, but you can only subclass one thing. Implementing an interface basically says, I will have certain service contracts of a certain sort. And unfortunately, I don't have, have time to, to cover that, but you'll find me talking about it and videos I can provide um, about some of the differences between those. OK, um, okay so um, boy, is it my pleasure. Um, to, to have had you in these uh, Java tutorials. I wish I could have covered it uh, further, um, but uh, I hope this has been at least of a little bit of use to you. Um, I'm going to hope to cover additional material in coming months uh, related to these and put it online for, for viewing. Uh, I'm grateful for all your patience in, um, in grappling with these difficult concepts and I would encourage you to use our forum that we set up to ask questions about these things. Um, it does take some time to learn this, this sort of stuff, but it provides um, a great deal of extra power when you're using these models to have recourse to the sort of knowledge of, of what's going on within the model and to be able to debug performance problems and debug um, errors in your model. It's really helpful to have some sense of what's what is this Java stuff doing? Moreover, to have finesse to implement custom interventions, et cetera, it's, um, it's going to be a real asset for that. So thank you so much for your patience and your uh, support for this. And again, it's, it's been my great pleasure. And we'll see what additional resources I can get to you in coming months. OK? Thank Thanks. 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 Thanks so much. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. I, yeah. Um, before I start waiting through the thousand email messages or something, I I've, I've been away for two weeks teaching two boot camps now, and it's uh, um, yeah, a lot of lot of email back backs up. Um, <laughs>